War is something that humans have struggled with since the beginning of their existence, and art has always reacted to it, from the cave paintings of prehistoric times to Guernica by Picasso. In this fourth episode of Fenafilm, we want to introduce you to six lesser known films centered around war, all with an anti-war mindset. We begin with a comedy and end with an abstract masterpiece from European art cinema. Stay with us. The first film is MASH, directed by Robert Altman. It is a dark comedy set during the Korean War, depicting the members of a military hospital who try to cope with their situation by joking about everything and everyone. Winner of the Palme d'Or in 1970, it is based on a novel titled MASH, a novel about three army doctors. As the title suggests, it follows three doctors who satirize everything, even their own country's ideals about war and the war itself. Don't you use olives? Olives? Where the hell do you think you are, man? We do have to make certain concessions to the war. We're three miles from the front line, and... Yes, but a man can't really savor his martini without an olive, you know? Otherwise, you see, it just... doesn't quite make it. Before we move on to the second film, we'd like to ask you for your support. If you like our content, give us a like and subscribe to our channel. And please share your thoughts on the videos and comment the topics you'd like us to create videos about. Many of us probably know very little about the Bosnian War, which took place from 1992 to 1995. Kuovades Aida, directed by Yasmila Zhbanic, our second film tells the story of a school teacher's day in the midst of this war. She works as a translator for the United Nations. The film takes place on July 11th 1995, the day of the Srebrenica massacre, one of the bloodiest war crimes in human history, resulting in the death of around 8,000 unarmed civilians. A.O. Scott describes the film as follows. The war ended and some version of normalcy returned, but Shbanic takes no consolation in the banal observation that life goes on. It's true that time passes, that memory fades, that history is a record of mercy as well as of savagery, but it's also true, as this unforgettable film insists, that loss is permanent and unanswerable. Circle of the Seat or Die Falschung is our third film directed by Volker Schlondorf. Schlondorf is considered the pioneer of the new German cinema, and this film was shot during the war years in Lebanon. <laughs> Circle of the Seat tells the story of George Lashen, played by Bruno Gantz, a journalist sent to Beirut to report on the war in Lebanon. George, a man tired of his routine life in Germany and seeking an escape, sets foot in the destroyed streets of Beirut. The New York Times described it as a balanced, thoughtful, extremely moving vision of wartime tragedy. Mm -hmm. 
Our fourth film is a documentary about the 1965 mass killings in Indonesia, titled The Act of Killing, directed by Joshua Oppenheimer. The film explores the horrifying events in which over a million members of the Indonesian Communist Party were brutally murdered by right-wing paramilitary forces. Oppenheimer takes an unusual approach in this film, as he doesn't focus on the victims of the war crime, but instead on the main perpetrator, Anwar Congo. Itu definisi definisi kejahatan perang. Itu buatan orang yang menang. Saya pemenang. Saya mesti bikin juga definisi kejahatan perang. Saya tidak perlu ikut. During the film's production, the right wing still held power and figures like Anwar were hailed as heroes. Oppenheimer confronts Anwar and his accomplices, exposing the dark aspects of their lives. After watching the film, it is recommended to explore the concept of the banality of evil, which we will also discuss on our social media pages. Buat mereka mereka yang selalu kami tangkap, saya tahu bahwa saya kerjaan itu salah, tapi saya harus melaksanakannya. Perhaps the most devastating impact of war is felt by children. Our fifth film. Turtles Can Fly, directed by Bahman Qobadi, an Iranian filmmaker, depicts the lives of several children in a Kurdish region on the Iraq-Turkey border during the U.S. invasion of Iraq. Film critic Roger Ebert gave the film four out of four stars, describing the film's story as the actual lives of refugees who lack the luxury of opinions because they are preoccupied with staying alive in a world that has no place for them. And finally, our sixth film, Shame, directed by Ingmar Bergman, one of the greatest filmmakers in cinema history. As we mentioned at the beginning of the video, this film has an abstract perspective. In a way, Bergman aligns the internal struggles of his characters with the external war, aiming to depict both the external war and the internal war within his characters. In 2015, Drew Hunt of the Chicago Reader placed it in Bergman's top five films, judging it as a war film that is not actually about war. <laughs>